We will finish our discussion of Fermi surfaces by considering the modifications that we need to have in the case of a block electrons, that's nearly free electrons. So the effects of the periodic potential on the Fermi surfaces can be summarized as follows. Uh, the first one is the interaction of the electron with the periodic potential causes energy gaps at the zone boundaries. So remember, if you look at the dispersion, energy dispersion relationship, we have uh, these uh, energy gaps at the zone boundaries. Uh, this is our uh, energy gap. And this was due to uh, standing wave solutions at the brilliant zone boundaries. So that's a Bragg plane. And so the Bragg reflection condition is uh, satisfied. Number two, almost always the Fermi surface will intersect zone boundaries perpendicularly. At the zone boundary, if you look at DEDK, it's going to be zero. So here we have the energy gap, which implies that on the Bragg plane, the gradient of energy is parallel uh, to the Bragg plane. So the constant energy surface will be perpendicular to the plane. Okay. Uh, number three, the crystal potential will round out sharp corners in the Fermi surfaces. So no sharp corners are allowed. Number three, the total volume enclosed by the Fermi surface depends on the electron concentration. The empty space we have in the uh, first brilliant zone, in the reduced zone scheme, will tell us uh, the, the proportion of the uh, states that are uh, not yet occupied by electrons. If a branch of the Fermi surface consists of very small pieces of surface surrounding occupied or unoccupied levels, pockets of electrons or holes, then the crystal potential may cause them to disappear. Parts with narrow cross sections may get disconnected. So uh, some small uh, areas where we have uh, pockets of electrons or, or holes will uh, may in the free picture uh, may get this uh, may disappear in the nearly free electron case uh, so let's look at the one electron per primitive cell scenario if you remember we have the fermi sphere in the uh, first brilliant zone in this case so half of the volume is basically occupied by the fermi sphere in the nearly free electron case we're going to have a modification here so this will protrude out to the brilliant zone boundaries and it will intersect the brilliant zone boundaries perpendicularly. If this Fermi surface involves two bands, uh, then you can see that we will have the crossing between the two um, brilliant zone boundaries uh, with perpendicular uh, crossing here and rounded corners. So it's not going to be a sharp corner as we discussed. So you can see in the scheme that the first brilliant zone is almost fully occupied except these uh, corners and the second brilliant zone part is folded back to the first brilliant zone as you can see here. Now the importance of this Fermi surface is that only the electrons that are near this surface will participate in electrical and thermal conduction because these electrons will have the ability to move to uh, empty states uh, about them. Uh, the effect of the temperature on the Fermi surface is very small. Uh, the surface stays almost the same even at room temperature. So this discussion is uh, valid at uh, all finite temperatures that we normally consider. In alkali metals like lithium, sodium and potassium, which have BCC structures with one electron per primitive cell, the valence band is half filled and the Fermi surface is inside the first brilliant zone. It's essentially symmetric and spherical. Well, that's what we see here. You can see uh, it's essentially spherical and symmetric, but uh, there is a small uh, modification at the, at the boundaries. Uh, the effect of the weak potential is felt in noble metals like uh, silver, gold, uh, with face-centered cubic structure, which have filled valence bands, but along the 111 directions it loses its spherical shape and protrudes out. Now, when we consider the velocity of an electron, the velocity of an electron is parallel to the gradient of energy. So we have group velocity 1 over h bar d e d k. So it's always going to be perpendicular to a constant energy surface. So if you look at, uh, for example, second brilliant zone 
uh, reduce the first Brillouin zone. Here you can see that the empty states are inside, the filled states are uh, basically these um, semi uh, circular regions and the electron will move perpendicular to the constant energy surface so uh, when an electron moves you you have to show it as the velocity vector pointing perpendicular uh, to the uh, to the center uh, the field regions are filled with electrons and they are lower in energy the empty regions are higher in energy so energy increases inwards and the velocity always points inwards and since many important physical properties of crystals are governed by the electronic band structure, uh, commercial computer codes are available to do band structure calculations. Uh, and these codes are based on a number of methods such as tight binding approximation, the cellular wigner sites method, augmented plane wave method, uh, which is linear combination of atomic orbitals and pseudo-potential method, etc. So uh, in the next lecture we will talk about, we'll concentrate on the tight binding approximation as an important uh, example to calculate electronic band structure. So in summary, uh, we talked about the modifications to the Fermi surface, the Fermi sphere, in the case of block electrons. So we, we need to have energy band gaps. The Fermi surface will intersect the zone boundaries perpendicularly. There are no sharp corners. The total volume enclosed by the surface depends on the concentration. Small pieces of pockets, uh, small pockets of holes or electrons may disappear in the nearly free electron picture. And we have seen some examples here. The Fermi surface, uh, the electrons close to the Fermi surface are very important because they are the ones that will participate in uh, the transport processes, thermal and electrical. Uh, it's essentially independent of temperature, so we can consider the Fermi surface at room temperature to be very similar to the one at zero Kelvin. And uh, we talked about the effect on alkali metals and uh, face-centered cubic noble metals uh, as an example. Uh, and uh, the energy increases when we go from field states to empty states in the reduced zone scheme. And the velocity of the electron should always point inwards to the empty state uh, perpendicular to the constant energy surface. And we have introduced... Uh, the, there, uh, the several methods like tight binding approximation, Wigner sites, augmented plane wave, and pseudo potential methods uh, to to do computer codes for electronic band structure calculations.